But here we go, just a short video with some messy hair about building code requirements for stairs and a little tiny bit of vocabulary. So the first BC building code requirement that I want to talk about is a review of one we've already spent some time with, and that's the headroom requirement. The BC building code says the headroom requirement in a private staircase is 1,950 millimeters. And in a public staircase, it's 2,050 millimeters. So let's take a look and see how my stairs are. So this isn't perfect, but I got my tape measure stuck up there on my ceiling and going down. What I hope is pretty plumb. And I've got this white board here on the nosing line. And it looks like it's about 79 inches. There's 77 on the tape, 78 just going into the tape body. And the intersection between the tape body and that whiteboard is about an inch into the tape body. So around 79 inches. What does 1,950 millimeters equal in Imperial? So my stairs are 79 inches. So 79 inches equals 79 inches times 25.4 millimeters per inch. Now that inch and that inch cancel out and left with millimeters as our unit. So 79 times 25.4 equals 2006.6 millimeters. So we'll call it 2007. Two thousand seven is bigger than one thousand nine hundred and fifty, therefore these stairs meet code. Um, as far as the headroom requirement goes. One thing I'd like to point out is that the ceiling above my stairs is angled for a bit. I was to make a little bit of extra room in the room above the staircase. The headroom requirement is applicable to the whole that whole ceiling there. So you can measure down from anywhere in that ceiling. And it would have to be 1950 millimeters. So you can measure down from that point, which is where the framing in the floor is, or I can measure down from that point here or anywhere along this angled spot and it would have to be 1950. So what I did is I just made the angle in the ceiling here so that it was exactly the same as the angle of the staircase. And if it was right at the bottom, it's right at the top because the angles are the same. One of the building code requirements is for there to be an effective depth of the stringer of 90 millimeters. 90 millimeters is three and a half inches, which you can see I barely have here. The effective depth is how much the 2 by 10 or 2 by 12 is left after you've cut the triangle out for the riser and the tread. It also says you're not allowed to use 2 by 8s and in fact it would be impossible to use 2 by 8s and do cutout stringers like this because there isn't a stair dimension available to you that will give you an effective depth of 90 millimeters if you've cut triangles out of the top edge of a 2 by 8. 2 by 10s and 2 by 12s are the only choices that you have. It also says that the thickness has to be at least 25 millimeters, which is an inch. These are made out of 2 by 10s, which means the thickness of the stringer is 1.5 inches, which is more than enough. In addition, it says that distance from one stringer to the next stringer can be no more than 1.2 meters. These stairs are 37.5 inches wide, which means I've got 1, 2, and there's a third string over there in 37 and a half inches. 1.2 meters, which is the maximum distance between stringers, is roughly four feet, which means I have one more stringer than I need here. This is typical construction, and it's the way you should be doing it too, whether it's inside stairs or outside stairs. The stringer spacing requirement that I quoted when we were looking at underneath my stairs is actually one of three numbers. The three numbers are maximum spacing of 600 millimeters, 900 millimeters, or 1200 millimeters, depending on the situation. The 1200 millimeters is applicable in single dwelling units only. And 
The stairs treads must be supported along the front edge by a riser board. The 900 mm requirement is also applicable in single dwelling units only, but the front edge of the tread does not need to be supported by a riser board. This would be for stairs commonly found outside, like sun deck stairs. The 600 mm stringer spacing requirement is for all other stairs. So that would include all stairs in public buildings or in spaces where the general public could access those stairs on a regular basis. The next building code requirement I want to go over is tread thickness. There's actually two different tread thickness requirements in the building code depending on the way the stairs are constructed. One requirement for stairs that have risers and a different requirement for stairs that don't have risers. You can think of the treads as little floors. If the treads were too thin or if they were unsupported, they would bend every time you walked up and down the stairs. The requirement for stairs that have riser boards is that the treads must be at least 25 millimeters or one inch thick. These treads look like they are an inch thick, but it's a little deceiving. The way these stairs were constructed is that first I cut the, the stringers, then I put plywood risers and treads on, and then I covered the plywood with MDF riser boards and solid oak treads. The solid oak treads are three quarters of an inch thick, and they're attached to the plywood treads underneath it using construction adhesive. Three quarters of an inch plus five eighths is one and three eighths of an inch. So these treads are three eighths of an inch thicker than they need to be according to the code. Here I have some open stairs leading up onto my back deck. They're called open stairs because there's no riser boards. As you can see, the treads are made out of three pieces of two by four. Two by fours are an inch and a half. The building code requirement says that for stairs without riser boards, the minimum tread thickness is an inch and a half. So these stairs meet that code requirement. So those are the major requirements for building a set of stairs and they'll get you through simple jobs. But if you take a look at section 9.8 in the building code, there's actually 10 pages of rules that apply to stairs, ramps, handrails and guards. So be sure to go through that section if you're doing anything that's a little bit more complicated than just building a simple set of stairs up to your back deck. I hope this has been helpful and stay tuned because the next video is on cutting out a stair stringer.